Hello everybody, welcome back to the show. So today we're gonna to be replacing my turbo on my 0560 Power Stroke. And so what I've got here is the Stage 2 Gen 2 uh, KC Turbo. So this is a 64 millimeter wheel, as you can see. This is a uh, billet compressor wheel. Um, but the biggest thing that they've actually made the changes with was actually on the turbine side, which we can't really see. But they, they actually came in here and changed the wheel uh, compared to what the old Gen 2 was. So, what we're going to do is show you how to replace it. And this is a, usually a pretty straightforward job. It takes me about an hour. It takes probably a normal person about two hours to replace the turbo on their truck. So, let's get to work. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to remove this intercooler pipe. We're going to get the alternator out of the way. Then we're going to remove the lines that are actually connecting the uh, oil feed tube to the turbo. And then we'll actually be able to get to the bolts that hold the turbo on. Um, it's also a good idea to grab a little bit of penetrating lube uh, and spray it on the back clamps for the exhaust system, the up pipes, and the exhaust before we start this job. So that way everything comes together, uh, comes apart easily. For you guys with the stock boot still, you're going to be running an 11 millimeter or 7 16 bolts on the clamps. Um, those with the PDE clamps, I run 13 mils. Uh, these are a really, really awesome upgrade. They never fail. Next, we're going to remove the battery. The alternator wire that runs to the battery. And we don't have to worry about any parking. Depending on the year of your truck, you will sometimes have it sit right here. And you'll also have another electrical connector that sits here. On the 04 trucks, which is the alternator I have, even though my truck's an 05, the uh, connectors are all on the back and on the side. I'm sure everybody right now is like, are you going to pull the belt off first? And no, I don't. So what you'll see is that I just hold the back of the alternator, I pull the bolts, and then I let the alternator rock forward. I don't have to worry about messing with the tensioner. Okay, now we can see we're starting to get into the nitty gritty of this. So we've got a hose down here. We've got to get to so right down here it's going to be an eight millimeter bolt that holds this in this is for the main oil feed line as soon as i get to this point i'll get this thing out of the way the wiring harness so all i normally do is i'll pull the clips that are holding them in place of course i've had this off a lot so my clips are broken I'll just rotate it up and I'll grab something to hold it in place, whether that's a piece of bailing wire, bungee cord, whatever you want. Okay, now that we got our uh, wiring harness out of the way, we're going to remove the two 10 millimeter bolts that sit on top of the turbo. We're also going to remove the clip while we're here. Get it just pushed out of the way. And then now, it's also a good time to get at least some lubrication on those exhaust clamps yet again. Um, if your turbo hasn't been off in a long time, these are going to be a bear. So it does take a little bit of work to get these out sometimes. It's a paper gasket on this side, so that'll generally stick to the turbo. Alrighty, next we're going to remove our intake. So here, here, the bolt here, and then it really just depends on what type of intake you have as to what it's going to take to do this. If it's still a stock intake, you usually just pull the whole thing out as one unit. Um, but being that I've got an aftermarket intake, I've got a little bit more work to do. Um, but it comes apart pretty quick.
Okay, what you'll see is that this pipe also has a PCV valve built into it. Uh, you can reroute this and plug this off if you want, however you want to go about it. Um, but there's also going to be two bolts that molt bolt this to the FICUM. Most applications, they're already broken. Um, but if yours are still there, you generally should remove the bolts that hold the FICUM down, not the ones that bolt into the plastic flange, because otherwise they'll break. Okay, now that's pretty much it for the intake. There's not a lot going on here. All we have left is we've got our clamp over there. We have a clamp right behind the turbo. And then of course we've got our bolts that hold the turbo in. As you can see right there is the front one. And there's two more that sit on the back. So on my truck, I've only got the two bolts, the mount on the front and the back, because they use a different style exhaust housing. On 05s, they have one that bolts down, so it's flat, just like this. Whereas on 03s, they bolt in like this on the side of the bracket. It's really just okay to install two bolts. In all honesty, you might only have two bolts holding it in anyway. Okay, now's a good time to grab like a pick with a 90 on it. Especially if your clamps are kind of hanging you up on the bottom here. You can generally get a pick in there and get them to pop out. What I try to do is to push the clamp on the hot and on the up pipe side up onto the up pipe so that way they're not it's not hanging onto the turbo and hanging up on things when you're trying to get it out. As we can see. The turbo is loose, but we still have a couple of things that are in our way. So you can go about this the right way, which is to drain your coolant and pull this hose off. Um, what I normally do is I give myself just enough room with this hose. I'll pull it off at the uh, expansion tank right here, and I'll put a bolt in it and then try and loop it out of the way. And then we also have this red hose right here. This is not normally right from the factory. Something to look at when you replace your line is this is often hard and corroded and cracked. That'll cause a false reading to your map sensor. So I've replaced mine and this will usually just pull off, um, but I have a different clamp on there holding it on, so I gotta get it off. We're just gonna kinda come in here Grab the, the, the turbo as best you can, and you're going to get it out of its mounts. It's going to be stuck on the oil drain tube. So it's going to want to stick there, and then you're just going to kind of walk it out. little guy. Okay, one of the things that makes the uh, KC Turbo kits really nice is that they come with all the gaskets and seals you need, as well as all of the bolts. Because oftentimes, like I said before, the bolts will rattle out of these just stock. So you got all these extra bolts, so and also all the gaskets. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out our drain tube we're gonna replace these O-rings. Alrighty, I usually just do this by grabbing a pick, pulling up underneath the O-ring, pulling it off, and then the new ones will just roll on. Watch your hands and be careful on this. Because of putting turbos on and off, oftentimes this will be bent and sometimes pretty sharp. So just be careful. So 
Something I do really recommend is grabbing any type of oil or lubricant and covering these O-rings. But right now, we're just going to go ahead and install this. And now we're going down and grab the turbo. Okay, in she goes. So I'll usually just set her down and then I'll hop up. Exhaust side goes in first. I'm going to try and position it on the oil drain tube. Sometimes it's better just to pull it out, put it back in, and it'll just kind of fall into place, kind of like it just did. So one thing to be aware of when you're putting this back together is the hot pipe, I mean, sorry, the up pipes, they're, they're just a clamp on a, a really fancy type connection. They're not fancy. But when you put the clamp on, it won't pull them together. The only time they pull together is when you actually physically push them together and then put the clamp on. So you need to make sure those are very well seated. Like it's okay if you can fit your fingernail in them, but anything more than that, I, I would recommend trying to reposition the hot pipes. Okay, let me go ahead and tighten up our bolts here. And what I didn't mention is that I had lightly tightened, just hand tightened the bolt in the back for the up pipes. And then we'll tighten those up after we get these snugged up. Okay, we'll grab our 11, we'll tighten up the up pipe. You always want to check these by hand when you're done. And as you can see, there's a little bit of tightness. I mean, that's pretty snug. Okay, I'm just gonna set into place right now. We're gonna set that into place. We'll pop our new O-ring into its spot. A little bit of pressure. We'll grab our two oil feed bolts. It's better if you just get one started. And then you'll have to sometimes finagle with the gasket a little bit. All right, now we're just back to putting things back together. You can put this hose back on, back over to the uh, expansion tank. And before we forget, we don't want to forget to put our bolt in down for the oil feed line, down into the oil cooler housing. You're still not done bearing your part. Oh, well, you're not caught on video saying that. <laughs> Okay, next we put our alternator on. I've always found it easier to plug everything in, or at least the bottom connector, before I actually get it bolted on. So the easiest way I have learned how to put a belt back on, because the tensioners are so difficult to get to on these, is if you got a fair bit of upper body strength, to come in here, basically stand on top of it, and then lift with everything you got. Okay, then we'll go ahead and put our alternator wire back on. These connections on the alternator are very fragile, so be careful. You see here, I'm just using a quarter inch drive ratchet. When 
tightening up your boots, you want to make sure that the clamp doesn't slip off the edge of the boot. You always want to make sure it's on a little bit of material past. Alrighty, next we'll install our tube that connects to the turbo. Like I said before, oftentimes the bolts that are right here are broken. So you can put them back in, you don't have to. It's kind of up to you. Most of the time, because the plastic is getting older and brittler now, they'll just break. you still have clips, put your clips back in. If you don't, you can see I'm just using a couple of six millimeter bolts. guys there really isn't a whole lot to change in a turbo on one of these they're pretty easy I mean as you saw there's not a lot to it I've really just seen some basic hand tools I mean this job I used a 13 a 10 millimeter an 11 millimeter an 8 millimeter and because I'm running a different hose clamp I'm running I had to have 7 millimeter but that's the basic hand tools I mean impact definitely speeds the job up um, definitely gets a penetrating loop for those up pipes it'll make removing them a lot easier but it's just, if you got a couple of hours, you can definitely do this job in your driveway. It doesn't take anything special. So uh, make sure that you uh, do dump a little bit of oil in the turbo before you start it. Uh, I had already done that before I got to the bench. I forgot to tell you guys. So make sure you do that. But yeah, get out in the garage and work on something.